I never understood how games can have effects like these. Ever since I was a little toaster, they have fascinated me. And then I learned to program and still did not have a clue. From the outside, you would expect it to be weird black magic fuckery no one understands. Turns out it's even weirder. Visual effects are somehow exactly in the middle between art and coding, so both artists and coders stay equally confused. But you may have noticed our own game has a lot of visual effects. And by the way, it is called Versifers Fungeon. It is an auto-scrolling kinda bullet heaven, but mostly full-fledged RPG roguelike with a stupendous amount of build options. It would be so great if you could check it out. You can play everything we have so far for free in the browser and on Steam. And if you like it, please consider wishlisting it. Anyway, this means I had to learn this stuff. And as it turns out, most of the stuff is not exactly complicated. Just very, very strange and full of tricks VFX artists found by accident and now copy from other VFX artists. Or all of them are just much smarter than I am. Most likely both. You see these things here? All of them are made using one easy trick. And I will explain it now. So how would you, for example, go around and make water? It seems incredibly difficult to code. But we do not need real water. We do not need a good simulation of water. For most games, we just need a somewhat good looking surface. So what games most often do is just use a shader. Basically a little program that runs on the GPU where it is massively, massively parallel instead of on the CPU. This makes it incredibly fast, but also incredibly weird to work with. Because when you do something in a fragment shader, you do it for every pixel, if you want to or not. And whenever you mention shaders, people are coming with these really specific takes and descriptions. Um, Actually, it's not per pixel, it's per fragment. It's important to distinguish, even it has no consequences at all. But do not let these guys fool you. It's not that hard and I will prove it. We have water in our game and people tend to go, man, that is some cool looking water. I wish I could make water like this. Guess what? You can. It's all just noise. We will generate some noise and mangle it until it looks good. So in a cool engine like Godot, you can simply generate noise on the fly. Your cool engine of choice can likely do that as well. Strangely enough, we do not care about the actual texture of this sprite at all. We will not use it in any way, which is why we can use whatever we want. Which is why we use this ugly robot icon. It is a tradition. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. We just need it so we have some measures and something to squeeze for perspective effect if we need to. We tell the shader that the noise texture exists by writing something like uniform sampler to the noise. It's called a uniform because it only exists once and is shared between pixels. And also because everything in the shader world needs its own weird name. I think they should have called it Unicorn. We can sample it and now made an ugly smudge. We can make it move by multiplying the time with a scroll variable and adding it to the texture coordinates of the pixel. The coordinates are called UV for some reason I don't know and they are between 0 and 1. U is the X axis and V is the Y axis. Time is just the time. It counts the seconds since the engine started running. When we tell the texture to repeat, it repeats. So we can just push very large values in there and don't care. And you can see our smudge moves now. But if you look at that, it's a smudge. It's not water. Water needs to be wet. But how do we make it wet, you ask? If you ever looked at water, you may have noticed it's kind of transparent, but it makes stuff behind it look funny. Come on, you know water. <coughs> we can do this in a shader by reading the screen. This is everything that's already drawn. So everything behind the sprite with the shader ordered by the Z layer. Just sample the screen texture instead of the smudge. We now read the screen texture at the coordinates of the regular texture, which looks trippy, but it is mostly useless. We need to look at the screen texture's own coordinates instead. And there's a keyword for that. We can now slightly alter them to make a distortion. For example, with our smudge. And you see, it waves. But this does not look convincing. I can smell that you feel very unconvinced right now. This is because you are not easily fooled, my friend. Your eyes can see straight through my illusion. To fool someone as smart as you, one trick is not enough. We will need two, maybe even three. It's as simple as that. You will see. We increase the complexity of this effect by sampling another noise texture and making it scroll in a different way. And now we just multiply them and have something that looks like waves overlapping. You still remain unfooled? Okay, we will layer on. We can give it a nice tint by defining a uniform color and multiplying it to the pixel. Now our water can finally be blue. We also define another color for the top lights and only apply it to the top of the waves. This looks better. And we have all pieces we need. Honestly, the most important step now is fiddling around until it looks good. Trust me, this is the way to go. Play with all the sliders until you like it. For another layer of fooling, you can add some wave particles when people are underwater and you are good. 
This trick is just everywhere. When you see fire, there's a good chance someone scrawled some texture over each other and mapped it to a gradient or something. It's just applied to a particle system. Or a disgusting poison cloud like this one. Same technique. This laser, it's all the same. I'm not saying there's only one trick. There are at least two. There, there are many tricks, okay? But it is insane how much is made with the same few tricks that are simply combined in a clever manner. It's all just stuff like dissolving, distortion, mangling noise in cool looking shapes, particles. And if you want to hear more about this, first of all, let us know by liking this video. If it performs well, there will be more. It's that simple. Also, we already talked a lot about visual effects on this channel, so go check that out. Two, three.